morning. Good morning, my creative friends. I'm Dr. Minette Rard, and this is Painting in Your PJs, live with Minette on a cool, foggy morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I was looking to see what the temperature out was this morning. It was so lovely and cool out on my morning walk. And there was fog on our pond blowing in the wind and I found a spontaneous hollyhock blooming, so much inspiration everywhere, which is what I'm doing today, is trying to finish up a painting I started based on a photograph I took on another beautiful walk this morning. I tried to walk pretty much every day. I didn't yesterday because it was raining, but had a lovely long yoga session instead. So I am super excited for, and really nervous about trying to get the details right in this painting. Do you ever feel that way? Like that you have this vision in your head or you're looking at a photo and you really don't know how to recreate it? Well, we're just going to go for it today. I had a talk with my inner critic this morning and invited her to just, you know, take a step back. And I'm, this is all about play and experimentation and learning. And if you're brand new to painting in your PJs with Minette, welcome. I'm so excited you're here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification button so you'll get notified when I do go live. And join me generally Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. I really wanted to finish this painting, so that's why I am diving in today with something different. And starting next week, I'm going to be creating an oracle deck live on these shows. I don't know how long it's going to take or when I'll get bored with the process. And I'm trying to tape down my watercolor over here, and it definitely is giving me some grief because the pages are curling up. But painting in your PJs is all about how we can use creative process as a tool for personal growth and self-discovery. I'm especially passionate about supporting women in midlife and beyond to rediscover that inner creative well that gives so much meaning, purpose, and fulfillment to our life. So I don't do a lot of really technique -y teaching, but I am here to talk philosophy, insights and just to share my really messy creative process with you. So let's dive right in and get started. And uh, if you're just joining me for the first time, welcome. Be sure to say good morning in the chat so that I know that you're here. And here is the just sort of messy background. And I, I do think I want to make sure that I just zoom in. So let me get this lifted up on the camera here. Zoom in just a little bit. So here's the messy background that I started yesterday, just an abstract background. I think this tape may drive me even more crazy than the, the painting, but we'll see. It's like literally pulling the paper up off the table because the, the paper is so curly. It would have been smart of me to stick it under some books last night and give it a little extra weight. And here is the photograph that I'm painting from. So you can see kind of where I've got to. I've got some base layers of shape. I've got some, you know, color in the sky up there. I'm pretty happy with the sky. I'm thinking it still needs maybe a little more white to brighten it up and bring a little more light into places. Need this to be still a shade darker and maybe even just a tad more tiny bit of detail that I might come in with, you know, some pens to do. So this definitely needs another layer. And I'm loving these sort of, you know, grassy, grassy greens. But where I want to focus my attention is adding the textured of the textures of the grass. I'm not in the composition really caring about, you know, these little photos over here. I want to focus kind of on this foreground pl place over here with these thistles and these sunflowers. And again, keeping it really loose, a little bit abstract. The background looks pretty good. I think maybe it could be a little grassier green. It's kind of a, a green gold and I really want it to be maybe a little bit more uh, Kelly green. So I might add another layer of greens to that as well. So we'll see 
we'll see where we get to on the journey. And again, this tape is does not want to stick because my paper is heavy and pretty buckled. I might have to go get some, some heavier tape. Good morning, Blanca. Great to have you here as always. So what's still needed in the sky, I'm thinking is the, you know, some little touches of white. Thank you, Leslie. I appreciate that so much. Um, some little touches of white and also the rays of the sunlight maybe a little brightened up. And I think I'm going to experiment with the, the gouache again to see if I can layer that in over the, the watercolor in some interesting ways because I think that it's going to go on differently. Like I'm, if I just start adding more watercolor here, it's going to activate what's underneath. The gouache may also activate it, but because it dries a little bit more matte, then um, I think I have a better chance of getting that in, installed in a different way. And maybe that gouache will sit on my teep there and help keep my paper down for a minute. So I have just a, a fun set of inexpensive gouache from Artex. There are 18 different colors. These are jelly cup designs. This is my daughter's favorite paint. So I've been experimenting and playing with it. And this washi tape does just not want to stick. And um, it's just different, right? It's just different. I definitely have not quite figured it all out yet, but um, my I'm, I'm keen to try. So I'm going to grab a variety of some little teeny tiny brushes to do this detailed work with. Most of these have never been used because I don't normally paint with tiny brushes. I also have somewhere they're on my table over there. I think I might have to go get them. A set of really fine tipped acrylic paint pens that I purchased recently for another project. I have a couple of uh, yellow gel pens in front of me. So I have some different things that I might try. Yeah, I thought about paperweights, but you know, then they're kind of annoying and in my way. But here's a cool bolt that I picked up on a walk with Brad the other morning that I think would be fun for pattern making or using with a gel print. So maybe that'll keep that corner down anyway. It's so interesting, like these two stuck just fine. Okay, so we're going to start with, I'm thinking a little bit of white. I'm wondering if I want to actually mix some white with yellow so that it's not pure white. So when we look up close at this picture, there's definitely some bright whites and these are kind of that pale yellow through our colors here. So let me pop this little palette out. So this, the nice thing about these is they do come with a, a palette. And I'm going to grab a bigger brush. I'm going to get my water opened up and ready to go. It's amazing. Do you ever think about like how long it takes just to get set up to paint? I know sometimes that feels like it can be really intimidating for people to just have to, to do all of the setup for painting. And I accidentally left these open overnight, so they got a little dry. But the nice thing about these gel gouache, it's just like watercolor. They're easy to reactivate. Maybe a little more yellow. And I might even see if we can get a little orange going over here. got a nice kind of peachy color so we can kind of vary some of the the colors that are showing up and I can come in and just you know add a little bit of highlight in there and just brighten up some of the lines and the light in a couple of places we definitely need just maybe a little bit more of some different shades of yellow. The nice thing about this is that it will pick up the color underneath, but it's not going to dry with some of those hard 
edges like the, the watercolor does. A mm, little more yellowy, maybe not quite so. And again, the goal here is just to begin to bring in some of those little bit more painterly details, including the, 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 the uh, rays of the sunlight peeking through there. And look at where, you know, maybe I even want to come in and, and lighten up that sky a little bit. But I'm kind of happy with the um, moodiness of the sky. Like that piece definitely makes me really happy. So I'm going to come in with this really light yellow. I've got a really long, thin tipped brush here and see if we can just get some of the rays of the sun and I'm noticing that the rays are shorter on that side and longer on this side and I'm going to vary the the color of those rays a little bit and again I'm going for impact and effect I'm not going for perfection here We've got those rays sort of, you know, shining through in a few different spots. Again, just continuing to add to the moodiness of the sky. So I titled this particular video, <coughs> excuse me, um, What's the hardest part of a painting? So I'd be curious if you're watching, if you're watching live or you're watching the replay, you know, what are the parts of a, a painting or your own painting practice that feel the most challenging? Where do you find yourself getting stuck? A lot of people get really stuck in the messy middle, including me. So sometimes, you know, I feel like maybe, um, I've messed it up and, you know, I, I don't know where to go next. And usually it just takes a little bit, okay, don't like that at all, um, a, a bit of a pause and walking away from it to get back on track. But what I'm noticing about this piece was this kind of messy, messy middle layer here has actually was really fun and simple to create. And the part that's feeling most challenging today is the completion and adding in the details and not feeling like I want to mess it up. So to me today, the end feels like the most challenging part of the process. I know for some people, it's simply getting started that is the most challenging part of the process. All right, so I am going to work on seeing what we can create. I want this to be more green. I'm good with those purple undertones, but I'm wondering how I can get a darker color. I still am feeling like the gouache is going to be nice and fun to play with. Over the top of things, not quite green enough. Add one of these brighter greens here. And I don't need the color to be green. I need it to be greenish to have sort of a green cast to it. Okay, that feels better. And again, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this interesting, you know, combining, right, of the gouache and noticing, you know, some of that little fine detail in the leaves of my, where you can actually see the distinct leaves. Okay, that's a way better color. And to see how much it activates the color underneath, what happens when it dries. What I love about the gouache is one, that it's matte, but two, it does stay put a little bit better so you can get some of those really nice, neat lines. 
that you can probably get with watercolor too, but I'm not as good at getting them with watercolor. So it's kind of fun um, exploring this way. And I'm using my brush in different ways here, using the very tip to create those details and then, you know, the side of the brush to come in and add those bigger swatches of color. And those leaves don't all have to be touching to kind of give that little bit of illusion of foliage, you know, going up into the sky, that orange sort of peeking out behind it. So that feels a lot closer to the original photograph. It's actually a little bit bigger, right? There's more of it because it got a little big yesterday, but I'm okay with that. I kind of love that tree line. And I'm going to want to come in, remember how we always want to bring colors throughout a piece. So I'm going to want to come in with this same color for some of the background, but also when we look at like the stems of the sunflowers where they're in the shadow, they do have some of that, that darker color. But so again, I'm going to start to just bring in a little bit more of that detail. And I'm still thinking this is, you know, it's going to take a lot of, a lot of layers. But I'm going to start with the just making sure I get some of these darker colors in the, the backgrounds here. And I'm wondering if the, the gouache is going to let me, you know, create some of those layers a little more effectively than I might be able to with watercolor. Again, it's just a grand experiment. It may be an epic fail. And I'm realizing I didn't take a, a picture of the background and I'm wishing I would have taken a, a picture of the background. Varying the pressure and the touch of my brush. to get some of those different layers and types of grasses growing in here. And as I'm doing this, I'm noticing this may need less detail than I think it does, right? Like, you know, there, yes, in the photograph, there is a lot, a lot, a lot of grasses growing in a million different directions. And when you look up close, you can see a lot of those, you know, striations in the grass. I just want to get a little bit of the dark underneath here. And I'm curious, so in watercolor, you work generally light to dark, not the other way around. In acrylics, the opposite, you work dark to light. And I'm actually not sure about gouache, so another fun experiment. So already it's looking better than it was yesterday. Probably, Leslie, I could definitely do that. I'm also looking at this going, I want these to be softer. So I'm just going to come in with some water. The other nice thing about gouache is that you can reactivate it and maybe just soften up some of those lines. That looks a little bit better. All right, I'm going to come in with this smaller brush and some of this more of a Thalo green. I don't know what they, they want to see what they call that color. Jade green. Really? I don't know if it's jade to me, but 
I think it's probably this kind of nice sort of blue green that you definitely get in some of these grasses. So it definitely seems to be sort of laying on top of the, the watercolor nicely. The gouache does. Okay, it's probably a little more blue than I want, but again, these are just the layers. Bye Blanca, have a great day. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to start coming in and bringing in some different texture. Georgia, I'm sorry, sweetie, you just can't be in my lap this morning. It's a very, very blue green, more than a jade green. Not. All right, more water. And I'm noticing like how many different colors and layers there are of the grasses and wondering, you know, how can I just keep this really simple. Again, just wanting to build up some color. This is where I love my acrylics and it's just interesting working with different materials. It feels like a great stretch. And again, just paying attention to when you notice that you get stuck in a painting. You get stuck in the beginning, just getting started, staring at that blank page. Do you get stuck in the messy middle and not know where to go next? Do you get stuck in perfectionism at the end? What happens when you're painting? So great things to just start to pay attention to and notice about your own process and to not make yourself bad or wrong for those thoughts and that thinking but again just to be in the in the energy of noticing right in the energy of noticing All right, letting that layer dry a little bit, I wanna come in with a better wash here of a little bit different green and uh, also maybe some details with the, with the yellow ochre. I'm having fun with the gouache over the watercolor, so I'm just gonna continue with that. And I'm gonna add lots of water so it's a little bit more like watercolor and see if we can sort of just green this up a little bit. Love how it goes right along the edge so that line of gouache is already dry on the, the page there. Okay, so the brightness of that green is definitely making ha me happier, more along the lines of where I wanted it to go. I love experimenting with new supplies. It doesn't mean I always love all the new supplies, but I definitely love experimenting and trying. So it doesn't flow quite like watercolor does across the page. And of course the page is dry and there's already paint on the page, but just noticing how it's going, definitely loving the, the color, loving where this is going. 
and I'm going to start just bringing in, I think, a lot more of that green over the top of things. Again, we don't need tons and tons of detail to get this to look the, the way that we want it to. I'm not trying to make a photo realist image here. I'm simply trying to capture the essence of what it was that, you know, I saw in my photo. Noticing where we have those darker spots and there's actually some you know, yellow spots and maybe we can can use the brush and the texture to just start to add some variation here. So I'm noticing the gouache does layer nicely, like better than I expected it to. So kind of in the, the center of my photograph, there is some, you know, shorter grasses. And then, you know, we have some taller grasses in the foreground. But we definitely want to have that transition between the details of the, the foreground and our background over there. I like the way that it's drying. It's kind of interesting. All right, now it's going to be time to really start to just brighten all of this up. Without losing all the lovely layers underneath but just capturing the essence of the grasses. I've got a lot of nice tall grasses in my foreground here. Anybody have any fun plans for the weekend? What are you guys up to? I know I'm not usually here on Friday, so if you're watching live and keeping Leslie company over there, stop by, say hello, let us know in the chat that you're here with us. And Leslie, thank you for being here. And again, I'm just coming in with a variety of shades of green, letting the, the brush do the work. I'm using long, light strokes. And you notice that my paintbrush is directly uh, perpendicular to the page, so that I'm just using the very, very tip of that brush. Not too much water so that I get a nice sort of grass-like shape. And I will vary the size of brush that I use as well so that we get a variety of strokes and widths and textures of grass. It's definitely coming along, feeling pretty happy about this. And the wind was blowing a lot the, the day that I was out for this particular walk. So, you know, in some cases, those grasses are really blowing in a lot of different directions. I'm 
and we have a lot of really tall grasses in the foreground. Okay, so getting a lot of those nice darks in there. Maybe start to get some of those bigger leaf shapes over here from our sunflowers. Again, just keeping it loose. And it's interesting, like I what I one of the things I love about the photo are the it's the yellow and the, the pink thistles. And as I'm looking at this now from sort of a a uh, you know color perspective, I may not even put the thistles. I may just put some of those sunflowers in there because the thistles that pink is gonna be maybe just a little bit off in here. Can get some of those darker colors. And our little transition spots. So I'm gonna come in now and start to brighten it up a little bit. It's actually coming along faster than I thought it would. It's kind of fun. It's the first time I've ever painted anything like this. So it's making me happy. And at the end of the day, that's really the only thing that matters is whether or not I like it. And I'm gonna get a little bit of this nice yellow ochre coming here, some lighter and some darker because we also have some nice, I may need a, just little bunches around in a few different places of these lighter grasses and these little seed pods in here. So we want to get a little bit of that light color and texture. Huh. It looks more brown on the screen than it does on my page. Let me brighten that up. A little bit, maybe add a little yellow. Get some of these nice little bright spots in here and these little tiny seed pods. We're just kind of peeking through in a few different spots. Probably kind of come back and add some stems to these as well, but you know it needs it needs those light spots. There's definitely some. Actually, this brush is too big. Let me grab a smaller brush. There's definitely some. Oops, and that one's a little bit too wet. There's definitely you know some bunches of grasses and different seed pods growing in here. And then there's also some nice color when you get up close and see the grasses. They are definitely not all green. There's quite a variety. So we want to get some of that added in here as well. So having a variety of sizes of brushes in your arsenal can really make a difference for getting into doing a lot more detail work like this. There's also a little patch of this lighter grasses. And you don't have to buy expensive watercolor brushes. I'm a big fan of just, you know, having a variety and trying out a lot of different things until you kind of really discover what it is that you like. Like I think this is an inexpensive, this is a, a Princeton brand, which is a, a decent brand, but I bought a sort of inexpensive set of these just at Office Depot one day and they've actually been really become my favorites.
Okay, I think the gouache was a great decision to go over the top of this. It sounds like a fun and full day, Leslie. I love it. And it's so funny, I wrote a, a blog post yesterday about, you know, adult friendships and uh, one of the suggestions was to, you know, master the art of Zoom hangouts with those people that you don't get to see in person often enough. So yay you for doing that. All right, so this has a couple of dandelions in the foreground here that I want to capture those dandelions as well. And they aren't quite white, like they look really white. So I'm thinking I'm just going to... And like watercolor, I can let this palette dry and um, reactivate it with water so I don't mind if I end up mixing up a little bit of extra paint on there. And I'm going to try this teeny tiny little brush and see if we can kind of create some little puff balls here in the foreground. Maybe a couple in a few other spots as well. I even hesitate to call these dandelions. They, they are in the dandelion family, but they're so enormous. Okay, I'm definitely liking the addition of even just a little bit more white. So I'm going to actually come in in a few more places and just even brighten these up. Just a few little touches of like where the, the light is hitting them and our little seed pods in here are definitely really white. feels good to just kind of brighten all that up. I've even got some, there were some little teeny tiny morning glories kind of blooming in the grasses over here. And sometimes they're really white and sometimes they're really pink. And they're beautiful little vines that tend to just really grow up and twist themselves up on the, the sunflowers and the dandelions, so they're tenacious. All right, we're getting some nice variety of color. Happy where this is going. Still feels like all of these rays of sunlight up here need to be softened up quite a bit, but we'll get there. Or actually, I'm going to let this foreground dry for a second. And I'm looking at this and maybe wanting to just bring some of these patches of grasses back just a little bit. Okay, this is about the most fun that I've ever had painting with gouache before and using it to layer over watercolor. Now I kind of want to go back and see if how I might be able to create this, the background, the landscapey background, if I could do that with the gouache. Okay, that feels definitely better to have them be a lot softer. I have to be careful how much water I add because it will, <coughs> excuse me, reactivate 
everything in the background. But that looks a little bit better. All right, I am going to add some sunflowers. And in this, I was on the back side of the sunflowers. They're all turned facing the sun. So I'm seeing the yellow, but not the, the centers. And then I'm going to decide about those thistles. But first, we're just going to, mm -mm -mm. you know, sunflowers are interesting because they're not a, like a lemon yellow. They're definitely a little bit more of an orangey yellow here, kind of a, maybe a, a golden yellow. And I'm mixing it with a little of that yellow ochre because I've used a lot of that color and it's just going to make sense here. I've got a lot of paint on that brush. Let's get some of that paint off of there. And I'm not necessarily trying to even put the sunflowers where they are in the picture. Maybe I'll work on that composition a little bit. And some of these I might have to come back in and add a little white to them and then pop in with a little bit of yellow so we can really make them. I can see on the screen they're not standing out quite like I want them to. But I am kind of liking this experiment. And there are just a couple of those just little tiny sunflowers over here as well. Let me just put a little bit of that yellow. And then there's definitely some yellow in my grasses as well. So I'm going to come in with just a really light touch and just a few little bits of yellow grasses because we have a lot we've had a lot of rain but we also still have you know the dried grasses from last season and this yellow is making me happy so maybe we're just going to pretend there's even more flowers blooming in there than we saw and make this a little Add a little yellow out there. On one of my walks, same area, but just walking a different direction, there was up, nestled up against the foothills a whole field of the sunflowers, just this beautiful swath of gold that was so amazing. Okay, definitely feeling like I'm going to need to brighten up the sunflowers. How am I doing for time? So I'm thinking I'm going to have to get the get this white nice and dry and then come back in with a layer of yellow over it so we can get a nice pop of yellow cuz I really want those sunflowers to stand out a lot more than they are right now. And that's because the gouache is a watercolor gouache. And so it's mixing with those greens underneath. But so far, I'm loving this. Yeah, she'll be proud of me for having given it, given it all a try for sure. pretty pleased with how this is coming along. I'm just going to hit those sunflowers with the dryer and I'm still still thinking about whether or not I want to add those pink thistles.
Let's see if we can come back in and brighten that yellow up. Putting it over the white. And if this doesn't get quite as yellow as I want it to, uh, I would probably come in with a Posca paint marker over the, the top and just add even just that little bit more yellow. But I think I'm capturing kind of what I wanted to capture, which was, you know, just the color and the idea of the flowers and the grasses. Let me try some of this funky little bit of a lighter green here. Also kind of a blue-green. Interesting. So I think the more variety we add, the better. Layer up some more of those leaves in there, those bigger leaves. All right, it's feeling pretty good. I think I am feeling like I do want to add some of those, just a couple of those little pops of pink. And these thistles are kind of interesting. So they're a little pink and they're a little, I mean, they definitely are a magenta. So I'm going to come in here and just add those few little pops of pink, like we've got some thistles in there. Maybe I'm going to add a couple of little shorty ones down here. And maybe we'll just bring in a tiny little bit of that pink in our morning glories as well just makes that composition just a little bit more interesting. So this is an, you know, an example of how I'm not trying to imitate the photograph, but just to use it as inspiration. It was the inspiration for the palette. It's the inspiration for, you know, the layout and the design. I'm wondering if I want to come in with just a tiny bit of that pink in my sky. Okay, so definitely this is the most fun I've ever had with gouache feel like I made some good progress. I feel like these thistles need some more, a little bit more obvious stems on them. They're long pokey stems and they've got prickly leaves. I went out to go for my walk this morning and I, I, could, I didn't even get past the, the end of my stairs out the, the front of my house because the thistles were getting so tall so I had to stop and do a half hour of weeding before I could go on my walk because it was just looking so messy out there. All right. I'm at a place where it feels like it's a great time to pause, to let this rest, to not keep messing with it. Very interesting, again, adding the, the gouache over the top. I might need to do a little touch up around the edges or maybe not. 
mostly got that put down but I'm pretty happy with while how that came out so I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in but let me see figure out the focus on that nope. so we can see some of the the little bit more of the detail of that foreground up a little bit closer so super super happy with this particular experiment loved sort of you know taking my uh time with it okay come on minute wrong button and getting it to a place where i feel comfortable calling it done where i you know don't feel like there's a lot more that needs to happen so feeling excited about that and starting next week I'm going to be creating a deck of oracle cards by the time Tuesday gets here I will have decided on a theme and on uh, just on Amazon I found this great set of oracle cards they're kind of like playing cards but they're a slightly different uh, orientation than the cards they were very inexpensive there's 80 cards which gives me lots to play with so I want to figure out what the style, what the theme is going to be, and have some fun creating a deck of Oracle cards. I've been wanting to do this for a while and um, figured that I would use my YouTube channel as some accountability to do that. So they were just called Blank to Row Cards from Imagine or Image. It's like I'm a game, I'm a game, I don't know, dot net, but blank to row cards. So this is what I'm going to be using. I think they were like seven bucks. So I won't care too much um, what happens with them and if I mess them up. But thank you guys so much for joining me this week through our journey through a watercolor landscape. It's been a ton of fun painting. Thank you for joining me live. Thank you for watching the replays. And I will see you guys all next Tuesday at 8 a.m. Mountain Time. Have a beautiful rest of your day and a fantastic weekend. Happy painting. Bye-bye.